You're listening to the Higher Ideas Podcast, where ideas grow. Connect on Twitter, YouTube, iTunes, or higherideas.net. Now here's your host, I. Hi everybody, welcome back to the Higher Ideas Podcast. I am so sick of trying to record the stupid corporation episode. You have no idea how many times I've been trying to record it. You have no idea how many times I've gotten halfway through saying the exact same thing and erasing it because I go off track. But I have to do this. I have to get through this corporation episode because I'm trying to approach the podcast in an organized way and it's been blocking me for two weeks or something. I can't get past this stupid one. So I'm trying to blast through it. I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to blast through and then we could move on to other topics. See, we're getting to the end of the Occupy protester activist type talk, and I can't wait to get past that and move on to the next phase. And it's very hard to put into words my thoughts about corporations, so it's been a tough one. Hopefully I get it this time. So, corporations are probably the most pointed at problem in this world when it comes to protesters, activists, progressives, all sorts of groups that want things to get better and move forward, corporations are always the big evil. And of course that's for good reason, it's not strange coincidence, there is real reason for this. But the problem is, most people just stop at corporations, they point at corporations and say that's the problem, and they don't go much deeper than that. And a perfect example of that was in Occupy, so many times you'd see a reporter going in there with plans to to sort of uh, make them look bad and they would find someone and ask them you know who are you here protesting against and most of the time someone would say something along the lines of the corporations but then it's easy to just say hey wait a minute aren't you wearing shoes and clothes and aren't you drinking Starbucks aren't you using an iPad and a phone to upload all this video you guys are taking where do you think all that came from it came from a corporation are you saying we shouldn't have products And that provides people jobs. Are you saying we shouldn't have jobs? And meanwhile, you're using this stuff. You're a hypocrite. And immediately, the protester couldn't say anything because they never thought past that gut feeling of it's coming from corporations. The problem is coming from that way. And that's the point. The point is it's a direction. It's not an answer. See, when someone asks you who is the big problem out here in society, You can survey the field and come up with all sorts of groups. There's government, there's banks, there's corporations, there's poor people, rich people, there's racial groups, there's cultural groups. You know, there's so many groups you can pick from when you're sort of surveying that landscape. You can split us up into many kinds of groups, and most people sort of feel that it's coming from corporations, that direction, and they point that way. But they don't go there themselves and investigate what the problem is. So they come up with a weak answer, and it's a vague answer, and it's easy to redirect into the positive points of a corporation and make you look like an idiot. And yes, those are positive points of a corporation, producing goods and providing jobs. There's nothing wrong with those two things. And in even primitive or tribal society, you have a sector that's always devoted to creating goods, making weapons and tools, making textiles, pottery, Uh, Even cooking, you know, there's always a group in society that is in charge of producing things that that are needed. And it just so happens that in our society, corporations fill that need. And there's nothing wrong with that. Until we find another system to provide these goods, they're the ones that are going to do it. The problem lies elsewhere in the sort of direction of corporations. And that's what I want to go over. For me, when I pondered this question... What is it about corporations that makes them quote-unquote evil or the bad guy? I came up with a two-part answer. And the first part I already sort of covered in the uh, decentralization versus centralization video, which is that they are an extremely centralizing force. Big corporations constantly are gobbling up littler corporations and becoming bigger, and then when they get bigger, they can gobble up even bigger corporations. And it's, it's a cycle that is very self-terminating and it's very unhealthy, as I discussed in that previous uh, podcast that I mentioned. Over-centralizing is never good. It leads to instability. It leads to corruption and weakness. 
and it leads to a resistance of evolution because part of evolution is falling of the old and the replacing with the new. It's the new and up and coming people or companies or creatures that replace the old and outdated. But when you have this extreme centralization, the old stay in place. And so society is kept from moving forward because of this giant whale that just will not get out of the way and will not change its ways and keeps pooing on everyone. You know, it's, it's, a, very, it's a very bad situation when you have something so big that it's immovable. A lot of pressure will build up behind that and eventually there will be some sort of explosion or collapse that will result from this. And then from out of that rubble, probably, the rightful inheritors, the, the fresher ideas, the more um, balanced approaches will thrive. But it would be great if that didn't have to happen. So the centralization component of a corporation is a big issue. They should be broken up and there should be limits on how much power a corporation can acquire. This ties into my second point, which is the second problem coming from the direction of corporations. And that is corporate culture. So what I mean by corporate culture is this. Corporations love to be regarded as an individual, and that is a very good way to analyze a corporation, including corporate culture. So if a corporation is a giant individual, corporate culture is basically that individual's mentality, that individual's sort of guiding principles and uh, motivational sort of direction. And when it comes to corporations, it can be boiled down to one very simple sentence. Don't be human. So here we have an individual in society who idealizes inhumanity. Is it any surprise that it's a problem? Is it any surprise that it's been destructive and unbalancing and, and, and very, very disruptive to the smooth and progressive progress of society with that kind of mentality don't be human or in other words be more like a machine so what is it about this that's a problem well first of all it expects the people that operate within it the employees the CEOs everything inside to operate on that same principle and that really sucks for people working in there because basically you have to check your humanity at the door when you show up at work. Anyone who works in a corporation knows this all too well. You leave your humanity at the door and you spend the entirety of your day, the majority of your life, being as unhuman and robotic-like as possible. Everything around you is set up for it to be this way. Every rule, every law, every review point, everything is set up to make sure that you are as unhuman as possible and you lose points for every time you are human. It's like a game set up to reward inhuman behavior and punish human behavior. So let me give you an example of these kinds of rules you have to dance around when you work inside a corporation. The first and most controversial I can think of is relationships, emotional connections, sexual connections in the workplace. Highly, highly frowned upon, if not specifically ruled against. Sometimes there's specific rules saying you will be fired if you do this or you will be reprimanded if you if you have a relationship with anyone in the office. Why? Why is this? Yes, it can cause problems when they go wrong and someone might have to quit. There might be tensions that aren't productive. Sure, deal with that. But to say that no one can approach anyone else, don't get involved, it's asking people to be not human. And yet you're expecting these people to spend the majority of their life in this group and not grow attachment to anyone. That's, that's completely illogical. But that's what corporations expect. Because corporations idealize inhumanity, machine-likeness. So that's just one example. Another example is independent thought and being generally an individual, different. When you are different in a corporation, beware, because you will be watched, and you will be judged harder than someone who blends in. So many people get by great in a corporation by just disappearing into the background, and just not being noticeable, not being any different than anyone, not having an opinion, and just doing their work like a good little machine. 
and they get along fine. But when you have someone in a corporation that has a mind of their own, or has a uniqueness about them that makes them stand out in the group, it's very, very dangerous for that person. And it's very hard for that person who wants to hold on to that part of themselves. They find themselves surrounded by obstacles and walls and criticisms from the higher-ups about this, and it always comes in a very friendly way. It always comes in a very, of course you should behave less like you sort of way. But it's no less insulting for a person who is awake and has a mind of their own to be asked to put aside who you are while you're at work because you're here to do work and somehow who you are gets in the way of work. That's not what it is. The problem is you are being human. You are being recognizably human and reminding everyone around you what being human is and showing them that you don't have to let go of this. So of course they're going to attack you and try to bring you down. Now there are other points to go, like a completely unfair distribution of profits. That's another big one where people are unevenly rewarded within the corporation for profits that everyone has worked for. Often the lower downs get the least of the profits and they have done the most of the work. Even though CEOs would disagree, guess what? You do the work of one man no matter how hard you work. So you should get one man's cut. Maybe a little more out of respect but not the huge, huge discrepancies there are between both pay and bonuses for CEO level people versus the lowest worker. So that's a very inhuman thing again, and yet it's somehow, of course, accepted. Of course it must be that way. Are you kidding? And there's also profits above sustainability. Above all, make sure you increase profits as much as possible, even if it will cut into future profits, such as destroying the world. Corporations would keep going until the world is destroyed just to make sure profits were maximized. And that's, of course, unhuman and also completely idiotic. But unhuman in the sense that it has no concern for the future of humanity. It only has concern for its immediate gratification of profits. Which leads to the next tenant. Profits equals productivity. Most corporations have no consideration that anything is valuable or productive or worthwhile if it does not increase profits. But there are cases where this is true, and it would increase profits in the long run, but again, as we just talked about, they're only interested in the now. So where maybe giving free coffee to the office staff would make them more productive, or instituting a policy of having a whole life outside of work, making sure the humans inside your corporation are well balanced as human beings and so will be more productive in the long run, is not considered most of the time and is actually considered too expensive or not worth it, not productive enough in terms of profits to be attempted. And of course, another tenet of corporate culture is at all costs resist and prevent change. And that's a big one. Corporations are very stubborn, usually, except the very dynamic and uh, competitive ones. Most of them have a rigid and very stubborn mentality of we do it this way and we will not change. And some have even collapsed under this stubbornness rather than eventually, right before the end, admit, okay, maybe we have to change. So many times, corporations will just crash and burn in their idiocy and stubbornness rather than embrace the new realities around them and adapt and change and update. It's very, very funny to see. So that one is not necessarily unhuman, but it's very unintelligent and generally problematic in ways I'll get into in a minute. Now, the human beings that have to endure this sort of environment does put a tax on society right there because these individuals don't get to bloom as individuals while at work. They have to be suppressed and they end up often depressed at home. So when they're out of the corporation, they're not doing anything for society. They're just trying to recover from what they've been through. You start getting bleed out into society. You start to get damaged to society from these corporate rules that you would think stay isolated within the corporation. You're starting to see that it sort of comes out of the doors into the streets and starts to be a tax on society. Now there's another way in which it's a tax on society, and that is that this individual, this grand individual that is the corporation, 
is standing among other giants, government, media, the public commons, the military, right? There's these other group giants that it coexists with, a lot of which started off with very um, good mentalities, such as the government, which has a constitution, for example, that is a very great mentality to have with good rules and solid ethics and, and a clear direction to follow of their own. But the problem is this insane new kid that is corporations, this unbalanced weird individual that is very anti-human, has to interact with these other great bodies. And over time, it has corrupted them. It has spread its way of thinking into these other systems. And that's when you start getting very big damage to society. Of course, the clearest and most incestuous example is government. Corporations have merged with government in an unholy union, which, which should never happen in a logical and sane society, and slowly has whispered into the ear of government all these tenants, hey, you know, you'll be a lot more productive if you reduce humanity in these following ways. Right? There's examples of this. How many times have you seen a politician have to step down after some sexual scandal has come out about them? Now what, what sin have they committed there? Why should they have to step down unless of course they've been extremely hypocritical, such as the case where they rile and rant and rave against homosexuals and then turn out to be having sex with men on the side? That's an obvious reason to step down because you have betrayed your entire position. But in the case where it's just a person serving uh, their role in government, caught with a mistress or caught with some strange sexual kink, they have to step down. It's just understood. Why? Well, because they were human. Now they're human. How can we respect you as a leader if, if you're human? Well, it used to be that being human was what made you a great leader, as I've discussed in the leader episode. But somehow now the corporate model is the way to be. You have to be like a CEO to be a leader now in government. And this is the influence of corporate culture that has bled out into government, into the public perception even of what a government official should be. Just from having seen so many corporate robots pushed into that system, we now think that's how it should be. But no, an ideal leader, as I've discussed before, is a human being who makes mistakes and is able to have these sexual indiscretions and then say, all right, you got me, you know, I'm a man, and this is what happened, but this has not affected my work and I'm still the same guy you elected, so let's move along. This, the crisis would be over immediately for that kind of reaction. But the corporate culture has prevailed in that case, and there's a huge expectation that you will be ashamed and you will step down, and you will leave your job because you had sex, because you were a human being. Same goes for independent thought and being an individual. Would you ever see an elected official with a bunch of tattoos? Or an individual with somewhat oddball things to say once in a while, but generally is a very sane and stable individual who would really fill the post well? Well, no, if they have any sort of weird quirk, they're preyed upon and that is instant elimination from a running. Why? Because this person showed themselves to be an individual, to be human, to be complex. So we do not want complex human individuals in government, is what we're saying here. And that sounds again like the corporate culture, huh? The corporate culture has again come into politics and replaced the way leaders used to be, which is passionate individuals that have real human hearts and are able to bring people together for a common vision that is for the good of the people. That is an amazing politician. Have you watched people like even Obama try and give a speech these days? It's the most fake, heartless humanity you have ever seen. They're saying great poetic words that you think should be moving the people, but it comes down flat because there's nothing behind it, nothing genuine. Because these are people that have forsaken their humanity in order to succeed in the new corporation that is government, just like you would have to do in a company to move up. It's kind of sad, but look at old speeches by old leaders, old recordings of amazing speeches. They're more like great thespians, great Shakespearean characters, than these flat, boring, robotic, corporate failures of humanity. Now when it comes to profits equals productivity, 
There is one that has bitten me particularly well throughout the years, and that is that in our culture, there is this weird message of if you aren't making money, you are not helping society. You are not helping this thing here if you don't have a job and you're not making money. And that really hurts when you're unemployed. That really makes you feel rejected and useless. And I went through all of this when I was unemployed. I have no meaning here. I am nothing. I am a waste of resources because I'm not making money right now. And I'm not working for a company right now. But what if I was out feeding the poor? What if I was, as I was, participating in movements that are for the betterment of society? Even if you're doing that, you're somehow seen as a waste. Somehow seen as not part of what we're doing here. But that does help society. That is good for society, if anyone thinks about it critically. So what does that say? Then that's not what we're doing here? Helping society? What are we doing here? Helping corporations. Somehow this has been put into the mentality of society. If you are not helping a corporation make profits, you are a waste of a person. And yet it could be argued that people within corporations are greater wastes of people, are a greater waste of a person because they are not blooming as a human being inside that building. That's being suppressed actively. It's very backwards when you start to think about it. So in a way, a philosopher, an artist, a poet, is better for society because they are exploring the human condition. They are pushing forward envelopes and the edge of thought. They are challenging us to become more as a greater human species. How is that not productive use of your time? Just because there isn't a dollar figure associated to it. And that brings us to, at all costs, resist and prevent change. Now this becomes a huge problem. Corporations as a whole block up the works. They don't want to change, and often they are needed as part of a greater change that needs to happen, such as dealing with climate change, such as shifting into a more long-term sustainable system for society. Corporations are usually the ones that stubbornly dig their heels in and say, no, we're not doing that. I will not participate in this. This is not profitable. Don't you understand? We have to do this for the profits. Sound familiar? Why is that even accepted as an argument? We're talking about the future of humanity here. We're talking about having a world there for children and their children. Those people do not even exist in the mind of a corporation or in their priorities. So the fact that they are allowed by government, by every other grand power in society, the fact that they are allowed and block up the works with that opinion is absolutely ridiculous. They should be forced to fall in line with what needs to happen. We should not have to wait around for them to t turn around and say, hey, you know what, the world is just about to explode. I think I want profits tomorrow, so yeah, let's fix it. No, that's too late for a lot of these big problems. So it is absolutely insane that they would be allowed to use that argument successfully. But because, again, they have infiltrated every other power center of society, the media, the government, is now all owned by the corporations, their decision goes. Their opinion is king, and we have to stop everything for them. That is a huge problem. And that deserves a lot of criticism and a lot of change, a lot of laws, a lot of action. How do we get change? We can't get it through government. Government has been bought. We can't get it through media. Media has been bought. So it falls to the public commons, the people, to demand that corporations become more human. That corporations remember that humanity comes first, not profits. The priority list should be humanity and the future first, then profits. The fact that profits are allowed to always come first is the main part of corporate culture that is damaging to our society. It may have been fine once upon a time to act the way they do, when they were isolated from society, when they were just a business. But now that they have melded themselves into the fabric of government and media and society, 
they have to accept their part of that responsibility, which is to be responsible for society first. So we've arrived to the core of the answer. We finally arrived at our conclusion. It's been a long and complicated trek through a very thick jungle of facts and thoughts and ideas, but we've broken it all down. That is the answer to why corporations are the problem in society and what needs to change in society. It is the source of all these problems, all these block-ups, all of these headaches in society right now are coming from corporate culture. Corporate culture must be addressed. It must be changed no matter how it happens, whether it be through the people, through pressure on politicians to pass laws, through separating corporations and government a lot, lot better, a hard separation so that they cannot speak as much and influence as much of government. So government eventually will remember that they're here to serve the people not here to serve corporations. And corporations will remember that they're here to serve society and the people, not serve their interests first. I'm sorry, Mr. CEO, but if you want to exist in my society, I expect you to give back to my society, not just in the shape of a few donations here and there, building a playground, but in making sure that you consider society first. And then money. Because if I, as an individual, was allowed to consider money first and society second, I would be able to go around robbing your banks. Because that would be my law. That would be my rule. Hey, I'm a corporation, remember? My job is profits first, humanity second. I could shoot a baby in the face for money, and you gotta let me go. Because the profits would have been lower today if I didn't. That's every bit as insane as allowing corporations to exist under this mentality of profits above humanity, roboticism above humanity, and today above the future. I speak about being asked to be less human and more robotic in a corporation. Remember that at every single opportunity throughout the decades, people have been replaced by machines wherever possible. Wherever possible. So if you are devoting yourself to a corporation and completely convinced in that model of being, remember that you are working yourself eventually out of a job. You will eventually be replaced by a machine or a computer as soon as possible, and you will be out on your ass because they do not care about you. They only care about the machine functioning well and efficiently and as unhumanly as possible. And compared to a machine, you're just a little too human, no matter how hard you try. And that's the future for all of us if we keep going down this path. It sounds crazy, but we are all eventually going to be replaced by robots. It's been happening for decades, and it eventually will replace all of us. And then what will we do? What will we have as a society thanks to all our hard work at corporations feeding the machine? Well, we will have worked ourselves right out of existence. We will be no longer needed, just like an unemployed person, just like a homeless person, and left off to the side to rot, as corporations trot on into the future with a robotic machine heart and probably eventually not even a human soul within it. It's insane to extrapolate that far. It gets really crazy, but that is the trend. That is the direction. So again, I have to remind you, what are you doing here? It's a lot to think about. It's a lot to think about, and it could diverge even more in many more directions. And I'm glad I finally reached some kind of end on this. I hope you've stuck around this long. If you have, I commend you. And I hope I've given you something to think about. Leave a comment. Be sure to uh, rate. And please, share this podcast with anyone around you who you think would enjoy it. I could always use the views. So long.